In this video, we'll be discussing the markers in the Dead Space universe. Markers are enigmatic double helix shaped obelisks of extraterrestrial origin. The purpose of these objects is to reproduce through intelligent civilizations and create necromorphs until a convergence vent is triggered, finally forming a brethren moon. Markers possess their own language in the form of symbol which they use to communicate. Two types of markers are known to exist, the black markers and the red markers. Black markers originated from extraplanetary traveling through open space until they impact a planet. The red markers are artificial copies of black markers created by intelligent civilizations. Despite their cosmic differences, both types of markers are identical in function, although red markers require the absorption of their makers to initiate a convergence event. No matter their origin, all markers emit the same highly concentrated electromagnetic signal which leads to insomnia, depression, and a form of dementia in most living beings it comes into contact with. It is believed that the ultimate source of this signal is the Brethren Moons, with the markers merely rebroadcasting it. Through this signal, the markers are able to communicate with each other across incredible distances, as was observed with the red markers on Aegis, Aspera, and Kremar were able to coordinate and act as one despite being separated by several thousand light years of distance. The markers display the ability to control what they transmit through the signal, leading to different effects depending on what is being broadcast at the time. It is however unknown if the artifacts themselves are sentient or if the intelligence demonstrated is merely the result of the brethren moons manifesting their consciousness through them. The marker signal is also known to cause interference with advanced technologies such as communications equipment and will manifest a powerful EMP blast whenever the marker goes through an extreme state change. The intensity of these pulses depends on the state of the marker and can be strengthened by certain catalysts such as a signal amplifying pedestal to augment the marker as was the case with the marker 3A or through the presence of individuals whose brains are deemed highly compatible with the signal. When coming into contact with the minds of living beings, the marker signal is able to manipulate their brain nerves, inducing a form of dementia that manifests itself in different ways. Affected individuals experience hallucinations, in many cases illusions of their loved ones or other people they know, which push them into doing the marker's bidding compulsive scrolling of symbols is commonly observed as well. Most of those afflicted are simply deemed to be necromorph fodder by the signal, which will drive the victim into a state of paranoia and compel them to carry out homicidal or suicidal actions to prepare for the coming infection, creating more corpses for its spread. However, in individuals hypothesized to have a higher intelligence or more compatible DNA, the signal can instead implant codes and blueprints in the form of a self-replicating mental image which can be utilized to create red markers. The implantation of the replication codes in the minds of suitable hosts is considered a priority to ensure that new markers are constructed and able to bring about a convergence event by absorbing their makers. Some individuals may instead receive different types of knowledge, like Chalice Mercer, whose contact with the marker signal gave him knowledge of new surgical techniques and new technical designs which he used to perform his experiments and would eventually lead to the creation of the hunter. It can be inferred that this is to aid the infection by creating new and more deadly necromorphs. All of the necromorphs are structurally sustained by the marker's carrier wave and they will fall into an inanimated sludge of DNA should the artifact be destroyed and the signal stop being transmitted. While the markers do not directly control the actions of the necromorphs, which behaves as little or more than animals with an insatiable drive to hunt and gather biomass, they can seemingly send out a general commands to the creatures through their pulses. During large scale outbreaks, the necromorphs are controlled telepathically by a form known as the nexus organism, or hive mind, which acts as a conduit for the marker's signal, 
serving as the artifact's second in command and relaying orders to the smaller forms. Additionally, the signal creates a dead space around the marker that keeps the necromorphs from approaching it. This ensures the infection does not grow over it and allows the marker to protect individuals of interest to its plans by drawing them to its base. The ultimate purpose of the markers is to trigger a convergence event and create a brethren moon. This is achieved by spreading the necromorph infection which gathers biomass for convergence. Well, by transmitting the markers, replication codes and instructions to the compatible individuals who will then propagate the infection should they survive the current outbreak. The creation of a brethren moon begins with a black marker being sent to a hospitable planet. There, the black marker emits an electromagnetic signal that appears as a source of limitless energy and it is speculated by some that the signal may even force a specific species to evolve into sentient beings capable of replicating the marker. Once the dominant species of the planet discovers it, they are compelled by the black marker to study and replicate it, creating the first red markers. Though the species itself believes this is to be the purpose of creating new energy sources, the true purpose of this replication is to spread the coming infection and limit their ability to quarantine it. Eventually the signal from a marker causes most of those around it to experience hallucinations and dementia, sending the living into a paranoid state which causes homicidal and suicidal actions. This paves the way for the next event by creating dead bodies, which will usually be stored near the artifact itself. Though distance does not seem to be a limiting factor in the perfection of conversion of the biomass. Those considered to have a mind more compatible with the marker signal, however, are instead given codes and blueprints for creation of new markers. Once enough corpses have been amassed around a marker, the signal shifts to begin the next stage, the necromorph infestation. This contagious genetic code is written in an alien language on the markers themselves. The signal reanimates the cells and tissue of all deceased life forms within the marker's area of influence. These dead bodies are then twisted into nightmarish, monstrous creatures that are built for the purpose of killing other living species and infecting them. This infection occurs only with the black marker, but also whether the other duplicate markers have spread. Once a sufficient amount of biomass has been accumulated, the necromorphs will gather around the base of the marker to prepare for the ultimate stage of convergence. This event can be triggered by a black marker or by the red markers, although the latter require the absorption of the creators in order to complete the convergence. During this event, several powerful energy bursts are released before the marker begins to pull every single necromorph and dead creature into the stratosphere. Along with the fragments of the planet, the marker then joins the resulting biological slurry as it gathers into the stratosphere, merging the necrotic flesh and the rocky fragments to create a brethren moon. The brethren moon then feeds upon the, any remaining life on the surface of the planet. Before traveling to other worlds, the markers have infected, where it continues to feed and grow in size. Where it is done, it joins its kin in a vast mental network spanning the stars where it seemingly fall into a state of torpor or sleep, but at the same time alert for any sign of potential prey. When the original marker or brethren moon was created is unknown, but it is known that a convergence event has happened many times to countless other civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy alone. The only recorded event prior to humanity's discovery of the marker occurred when the aliens of Tau Volantis discovered a black marker of their own process which is currently repeating itself with humans on Earth and other inhabited colonies in space where the man-made red markers have spread. By the year 2311, Tau Volantis had been frozen over and inhabited by the sovereign colonies. After extensive research, Dr. Earl Serrano discovered the events that plagued the planet two million years ago. Apparently, Tau Volantis was not originally a frozen death world but rather an aquatic planet full of life. Eventually, a sentient alien species evolved and built a rising civilization. The aliens soon found a black marker on their planet and discovered its limitless energy. Worshipping it, 
the aliens created duplicates across the planet to harvest its power. The aliens were deceived, and the Black Marker and its copies released the Necromorph Contagion among their species. Eventually, the infestation reached its limit and activated a convergence event, forming the Necromorph Moon from the dead aliens. During the event, several living aliens realized the impending doom of their species and built a machine that would freeze the planet and the moon, halting the convergence in its tracks. The machine was also built to bring down the moon, crashing it into the planet to destroy it before it could link with the other wider networks. However, the alien species died out before this could occur, possibly due to the planet's new climate, though it can be assumed that they were so few in number following the outbreak that they could not repopulate their species and died out as a result. Since this event, the moon has been frozen in orbit around the planet. Though its mind has fully formed and the creature itself was perfectly aware of what had happened, calling it out through the markers to any species that found them, begging for them to make it whole and turn it off, meaning to turn off the machine and resume convergence. The moon was briefly completed in the year 2514 by Jacob Arthur Danik, but not before Isaac Clarke and John Carver completed the machine and sent the moon crashing down to Tau Valantis. However, this action awoke the other brethren moons and set them on a course to Earth. 65 million years ago, the Black Marker arrived on Earth via an asteroid which struck the Gulf of Mexico, causing the extinction of the dinosaurs and either directly or indirectly the rise of mankind. In 2214, a research team led by Michael Altman discovered the Black Marker and recovered it from a crater off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico. After doing so, it produced dementia among the scientists and released a necromorph infestation. Despite all precautions, the majority of the research team was lost to the infection. Although they were able to stop the outbreak within the walls of the compound, it is unknown what exactly happened to the Black Marker afterwards. Although its data and replication codes were successfully recovered by the government, while Altman's mysterious death and work with the Black Marker made him a martyr and a figure head of the newly formed religion of the Church of Unitology. Using the Black Marker's research, the sovereign colonies wished to not only study the Marker signal effects, but to use it as a source of energy following a research crisis due to overpopulation. They eventually built three red markers, which were located on the classified distant planets of Aspera, Krimar, and Aegis. However, outbreaks commenced around the facilities and they were forced to shut down, erasing any knowledge of the red markers. In 2311, the Sovereign Colonies and Dr. Earl Serrano wished to find a source of the energy the markers received. They traced the signal back to Tau Valantis, where its source was believed to be. The team uncovered the thousands of markers made by aliens and other outbreak was brought upon the humans. General Spencer Mahad soon issued Scenario 5 to eliminate everything and everyone involved in this mission. After El Serrano uncovered the secrets of the alien civilization, the moon, the machine, and the codex, he sent Tim Kaufman and Sam Arkman to recover the code. Unfortunately, the mission ended in the demise of Tim, Sam, and Mahad, and eventually Serrano himself. By the 25th century, humanity had grown to inhabit thousands of colonies across the galaxy, but overpopulation and energy issues persisted despite the advance in technology and resource extraction. This forced the humans to go into deep space mining, forming the Conconans Extraction Corporation. Deep space mining became a reality with USG Ishimura. In 2508, the support of the Church of Unitology, Captain Benjamin Methius, and the USG Ishimura was sent to recover Marker 3A on Aegis. After the unearthing of the Marker, the planet was also cracked open by the Ishimura for mining purposes. However, this caused a necromorph infestation of the planet's site colony, which then spread to the Ishimura. After the USG Kellyan and the Isaac Clark arrived on the Ishimura, Isaac's objective became returning the marker to the planet in the hopes of stopping the necromorph hive mind. However, it soon became apparent that he was being used by the red marker, 
as it imprinted itself replicating signal in the engineer's brain. Isaac escaped Aegis as the Ishimura and the continent's sized chunk of rock it had mined crashed into the planet and destroyed the marker. Isaac along with Nolan Strauss assigned us to cause another outbreak on the USG Oranen using a shard of the Marker 3A was brought to Titan Station to revive the Marker program. Now run by EarthGov for the sake of harvesting limitless energy, eventually creating the Site-12 Marker on the Titan Shard, it resulted in another outbreak and the start of the convergence event as the Marker attempted to absorb him. Clark along with Ellie Langford escaped Titan Station before it and the Marker were completely destroyed. Unfortunately, the markers had spread to nearly every major colony due to EarthGov's replication program. Seeing this as a violation, a radical unitologist group known as the Circle began unleashing the markers among the colonies, spreading the necromorphs to cause a universal convergence. After Isaac Clarke, Ellie Langford and John Carver uncovered Serrano's work on Tau Volantis, they completed the alien machine and killed the moon orbiting Tau Volantis. Ellie returned to Earth, believing Isaac and Carver dead. However, Isaac and Carver survived, but their actions with the moon awoke all of its brothers, which soon came back to Earth in order to consume all of its biomass.